Questions, questions come from, from probably. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Whoever asks, and we're, it's on tape, so okay, cool. we've already had somebody say "not cutting." Yeah. <laughs> to stop and start over. Never heard such a phrase. <laughs> <laughs> coach, you coach corners. Yes, sir. Okay, so we just got them talking to coach uh, about just the differentiation between the positions. What do you like about being able to stay with corners and focus on their skill set as opposed to having to diversify amongst the safeties and the corners at the same time? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of crossover between the positions, between, you know, safety and corner, but also uh, if you really want to be detail-oriented, I think the opportunity for us to be able to coach these guys separately is huge. Uh, cornerback's a position I'm passionate about. Um, you know, played it for all but one year of my playing career. So um, being able to pour experience into those guys and, and, and obviously the guys we got here are talented. So um, it's exciting to work with guys that are talented, but also guys that have a, a you know, coming into a, a, a program that has a, a strong history with the cornerback group. So I asked about the DBU thing. What are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, with DBU, I think we must always be respectful of the guys that come through. One thing I tell the guys, though, is, you know, respect and learn from those guys that have come through. Um, but at the same time, uh, I think they'll be far better players being their authentic selves instead of trying to be an impression of someone else. And so I think for me as a cornerbacks coach, it's my responsibility not to just be knowledgeable on the history and not just to be knowledgeable on the scheme, but also be an expert on how our individual players move so I can cater my coaching points to each one of their specific ability and skill sets. You know, I always say build on their GG, that's their guy given. So I've got to build on that. Will spring kind of be challenging because the numbers may be a little low there, are they? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, the numbers are a little lower, but there's some guys we got a mix of uh, scholarship and walk-on players that are going to go out there and compete. Uh, they're going to challenge each other within the room. They're going to challenge the receivers across from them and get challenged as well. So, um, you know, we'll manage reps. Guys are aware of what's ahead of them. But, um, you know, with the style of play, we'll have ways to protect the guys and, and make sure we're getting the most out of them. The previous coaches that we talked to that said, you know, meetings are great and all that, but they just can't wait to get on the grass and coach and coach guys, the first team, so to speak, here. And you the same way. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm a former school teacher, so um, I, I value the classroom and the meeting room as well. Um, one thing that's big as a teacher, uh, you know, is there's all these different, like we spend a lot of focus on the material, right? And as far as the material that's being processed, but the one thing we don't emphasize enough is the mind. That's where all the information is being processed. So I see the classroom and the meeting room as my opportunity to see how my guys best process information. So then when we take it to the field, I'm hitting all the different learning types. Tell us about your personal story. Kind of take us through your journey to get to LSU. What brought you here? Uh, yeah, so I'm St. Louis, Missouri. Always proud to say that. Um, um, played my college ball at Mizzou, graduate transfer to Memphis. Uh, played most of my career with the Vikings and the Cowboys. Uh, had some brief stints with the, uh, the Rams and the Chiefs. Um, and then uh, went right from playing to coaching. Um, I used to substitute teaching my off seasons. Um, I'm from Ferguson, Missouri. So um, one thing that we had was it's a lot of talent that comes out of St. Louis for football. Um, and so a lot of guys had already done youth camps, football camps. I want to be able to connect with young people and youth uh, through more than just football. So a friend of mine, John McGaffey, suggested that I do substitute teaching. And so that got me into the classroom. That's what really warmed me up to the idea of coaching. So I would substitute teach during my off seasons and then um, went straight from playing to coaching. I was 25, 26 years old, uh, still learning how to be a, a, an adult and, and teaching others how to do that as well. Um, you know, the SMET program, you know, we, we struggled early um, and then built them up into a national powerhouse. And then by the grace of God, one of my former coordinators gave me a call with the Vikings um, and brought me on staff as an assistant. Um, really enjoyed that experience, met some great LSU guys while I was there. Um, and then me and Coach Kelly had crossed paths along the way. And, you know, he reached out to the head guy, Coach Zim, and, even Zim told me it was a great opportunity. I knew what it was. My wife was formerly a student here for a period of time, and so I've been hearing about her rave about LSU for the last seven years, and now I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. So <laughs> I definitely understand what she was talking about. So is this your first college job? First college job. So I've been high school, NFL, and, and now college. What about the working with this age group You know, do you like so far? Uh, one thing I always say is the similarities first, whether it's high school, college, NFL, the athlete wants to be, the student athlete in this case, wants to be respected. They want to be valued and they want to be informed. Um, the, the gap is in high school uh, or in, in college or in NFL, everybody belongs. In high school, you know, you got to take a guy, you know, you might have to take a 4'8", you know, a, a five foot eight corner that runs a 4'8", and get him to match up with a five star. But in, in the college aspect, 
there's a vetting process before you get here. So everybody belongs. So you, everybody's capable of performing. It's just my job to squeeze every ounce of ability out of them. Uh, the biggest transition from NFL to college is the academic aspect, but that's something I appreciate. Um, and then also the recruiting aspect, I thoroughly enjoy that, having been on the other end of it, you know, with the prospects that we had come out of our school back when I was a high school coach. So being able to relate and connect and have those conversations with the high school coach in the recruiting process as well as the athlete, but also to tie academic pieces in because at the end of the day, the classroom's an extension of the playing field and vice versa. And when, so we want to capitalize on that. When you were considering this position, how much did SEC and the competition in this league and this division come up? I mean, that was a, that was a huge factor. Um, I think, um, you know, that environment can pull the best out of you. Um, and so for me, it, it's not just the opportunity to develop people. Like me and Coach Kelly have a great alignment when it comes to developing the total person, but also the opportunity to do it uh, with the highest standards and, and with some of the best resources. And so, um, you know, being from St. Louis, it's kind of a French quarter in its own right. It has some of the Louisiana ties to it. And so I'm aware of the passion that comes uh, with this fan base. So. I mean, you know, the, the, the biggest tie here was, was doing these things at a championship level, but also doing it within one of the most passionate communities. How would you describe uh, Coach Kelly's organizational skills? It seemed like he's just kind of a calm, steady leader. Or how would you describe his vision and what he wants to do here? Yeah, I would definitely say it's, uh, it's almost a calming effect. You can tell there's urgency at the end of his words and, and how he moves. There's a, a high level of orderliness and discipline with it. But also there's a sense of peace as he moves because this isn't his first time doing it. And, and that tends to rub off on those uh, around him on the staff to, to have been around the guys experienced as he is that's done it in his own right. Um, you know, at times these things aren't for the faint of heart. And for him, this is something that he's very comfortable with. How old are you? 32. So six years. Yeah. Yeah, so six years ago, I was. <laughs> the hammies can't do it no more, though. The hamstrings ain't got it no more. What's the, um, what's the next few weeks look like for you guys, and how excited are Obviously, March is a busy time here. Um, uh, and how excited are you to get some of these recruits on campus uh, over the next few weeks and, and get to see some of these players that you guys have been recruiting uh, face to face? Yeah, the next few weeks, as far as within the program, it's all about clarity and purpose, being as clear and concise uh, as far as what we expect from our players, but also what they can expect from us. Uh, that's a mutual relationship there. As far as the recruiting aspect, uh, just really letting them know uh, the prospects and their coaches and families know what we stand for, what we're about. Uh, the type of development they're going to get. Um, you know, for me, I'm really big on efficiency, you know, capitalizing on every every bit of, uh, of ability, trying to squeeze that out the individual. So just letting them guys know that they're going to get a high level development, a total development. Um, you know, so as Coach Kelly says, and we say with the program now, graduate champions on and off the field. And so uh, you can't fake that. It's got to be delivered genuinely. But I think we all have a track record and buy in with, with those traits that that'll uh, be conveyed to the families and prospects that we meet with. You got somebody you can cover, Boutte? Huh? You got somebody you can cover, Boutte? All right, we'll find out. I, I always <laughs> say, let's talk more work. <laughs> all right, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.